abductions, you know, and twitches and do that movement we want. We've got the right muscle. This is the other. You know, kind of one like that. Mm. All, right, so we... All right, so three weeks ago, Tanya was playing dodgeball. She was blocking with her hand, and then the ball impacted her thumb, pushed it downward. That's where? Oh, yeah, yeah, a little, little bit. And then we looked at it last week, diagnosed it with a strain of her uh, adductor muscle in her thumb that comes across the thumb, attaches to the inner portion of her thumb, and it kind of helps with this motion that way. So you can think about how the ball impacted her hand, push her thumb this way, and strain that tendon. All right, so here's the clinical reasoning behind what we're thinking when we diagnosed her injury last week. Um, if you want to skip this part and just see the kneeling, skip ahead. Uh, but here we're going to talk about how we came to the conclusion that she strained her adductor muscle. So when she was playing dodgeball, Tanya, she was gripping the dodgeball with her hand like so. Okay. So if any of you have played dodge before, dodgeball before, these balls are about 8 inches in diameter. Um, and so you have to grip them pretty hard. You can see they're pretty firm. I'm going to show you in that position there. So you're doing this kind of motion, gripping a ball squeezing towards the fingers together so really you're using a lot of these muscles inside your thumb and um, gripping the ball as hard as you can especially when they're newer they're a lot harder to grab so in Tanya's case here she's grabbing it holding it as hard as you can another ball came and she blocked it with that with that hand and because of that it kind of forced her thumb into this outward motion as she was gripping the ball and you think about the type of motion that it's uh, up opposing so it's it's pushing it out into this abduction motion of her thumb so as she's gripping the ball she's forcing this adduction flexion motion with her thumb and the ball that came and smacked her hand or hit the other ball and forced her thumb into this abduction extension motion here so that kind of forced the muscle um, to kind of, I guess, really put a lot of pressure into that muscle, the adductor muscle. And so when we tested it, we're looking at, okay, what kind of motion did she have? She was quite limited when she was doing some flexion motions with her thumb. Um, and she was uh, feeling a little bit of discomfort with resisted adduction of her thumb. So we came to the conclusion that it sounds like it's more of a muscular type of injury, more so than, say, a fracture, because that would present with a lot of swelling, a lot of point tenderness. Um, and over two to three weeks, I think, between when I first saw her uh, initially from her uh, original date of the injury, uh, the swelling had subsided quite a bit i think she even reported after about a week it subsided quite quickly whereas um with a fracture especially in this area we're concerned about the scaphoid um we'd expect maybe swelling that would be persistent for a longer period of time rather than it going away after one or two weeks so that's how we kind of came to the conclusion that it sounds like a muscular type of injury more so than say a bony injury or a joint injury um she also wasn't describing any kind of uh, ongoing numbness tingling other than the initial onset when she first had the injury, maybe some swelling in the area caused some um, uh, irritation to the nerves in, the, in her thumb. But after a day or so, that numbness tingling went away. And again, if that persisted, then we can consider maybe a nerve injury. But because she had swelling that kind of went reduced quickly, um, no numbness, ongoing numbness or tingling um, or loss of sensation in the thumb, and the t mechanism of injury, so it's a big one that we look at uh, when we look at diagnosing injuries is the mechanism of the injuries, the way that the ball was forced uh, or the thumb was forced away from her hand. Uh, we're thinking, okay, muscular or tendinous type of injury. And in this case, we diagnosed it with a pollicis adductor muscle strain. Um, I'm sure there are others that might be involved as well, so such as like flexor pollicis as well. Uh, but the main one we saw that was really irritated or limited was this adduction motion at her thumb. And so then we diagnosed that with an adductor strain. Um, three weeks into it now, we're going to loosen it up. So that's what we were doing today, and we were going to dry needle it to help her loosen that muscle up. Okay. It's about three weeks now, her movement's getting better, but it's still a little bit restricted. So what we're going to do today is we're going to needle it in here to so see if we just loosen it a bit. Uh, she's been given exercises, mainly adduction exercises, extension exercises, just to kind of get the strength back in the thumb and range of motion with the thumb. So, ready? Okay. <laughs> Have I done your thumb before? No, I usually don't see the needles at all, but it's okay. It's fine. All right, you sure? Okay. Why would it be sore? It's just more sensitive in the thumb. Oh. Yeah, compared to like your arm or whatever else we've done before. It's just I, I'm um I don't 
I don't prefer needles at all. Yeah, yeah. It's not that I can't look at needles. Well, it's not even that. It's just like the soreness combined with the, I don't know. Anyways, if you feel like head, just let me know. I'll cut you. I'll cut you. There you go. <laughs> so you what a hero. Oh, hero. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for the thumb, the only thing we have to be cautious of is an artery that comes around the MCP area. What is that? Or was that? CMC area, actually, not MCP. It's an artery that kind of wraps around that area there. So we just need to come slightly still to that. So thumb right on the joint. Make sure that it's not going to be in that vicinity. Uh -huh. Ready? Yeah. I can see your vein. Sore? I felt a pinch. pinch. Any achiness? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to move your thumb when there's a needle in it. <laughs> You're moving your thumb? <laughs> okay, next one. I'm going to do one or two more here, okay? How was that first one? It's okay. It's okay. All right. How would you describe that feeling? It's weird. Yeah? Is it different from the rest of it? I in your shoulders and your arm before, but how does this compare? Similar? I think I can feel it more. Yeah. More sensitive. Mm. Don't you feel? Trying not to move its reflex. Yeah, I don't know. No. The twitching is okay, but try not to actively move your thumb. You see a thumb twitch? <laughs> you see it goes. <laughs> so we know we got the flexor of the thumb. <laughs> a little bit of adduction. So you know when it twitches into that movement we want, we've got the right muscle. You see how they're, the finger kind of went like that? Mm. Right, so we got right into the adductor there. Yeah, some flavor into time. here. Half asleep still. <laughs> playing Candy Crush or something like that. Here. Don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> to come to the back of the hand instead of the front because it's sensitive, more sensitive on the front. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not moving That's all involuntary person. twitching? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What is that? That's what? How come that part um, I was twitching more? Maybe got a few more muscles in there. They kind of layer on each other. Uh, or it just might be more sensitive in that one spot. Manageable though? Mm -hmm. I think that is. I'm not fainting, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I think but I think even between last week and this week, um it's a bit better already. I can work out later today, right? Um yeah, should be fine. I mean give it an hour or so the soreness should go away. Um, but if you're finding it difficult to grip dumbbell, barbell, or whatever, then do what you can. So as you can see, the procedure itself with the dry needling can be quite quick. I know there have been instances where I've needled my patients and it takes 10-15 minutes. That's because we're doing multiple areas, but generally speaking, if we're doing just one area, so for example, Tanya's hand or her thinner muscle here, it literally took me, what, two minutes. Um, also, depending on the area, because the hand is a bit more sensitive, we don't want to be poking it too much. So really, it's a, a, 
I guess, depending on the area, the type of injury, the patient's tolerance, um, a lot of different factors go into how much we poke or how uh, often we do it. Uh, so again, with Tanya, this is week three. I generally don't needle anything earlier than week three just because of that acute healing phase. We don't want to be flaring it up too much. Um, but here, I thought it was indicated for her thumb, and she did kind of uh, describe that it did help afterwards, which is great. That's what we want to, what we want to see. So anyways, guys, I'm... So happy that you guys watched this video. Now, I know we did it a little bit differently for this video where I kind of described my clinical reasoning behind why I thought was what was happening to her injury. And if you enjoyed that or you appreciate that kind of uh, reasoning or the kind of description of what we're doing, uh, drop a comment in the, in the comment section below so I know that, okay, maybe next time my future videos I'll uh, explain a little bit more rather than just needling. Because I know sometimes if I'm just needling, it's a little bit confusing as, as to why I'm doing it. So if you appreciated that or you enjoyed that, um, kind of description or the kind of the, the thought process of what's going on through my head or a physio's head then drop me a comment below and let me know uh, other than that subscribe to the channel hit that like button and hit that bell notification because i'm going to try to post some more videos i know i say that all the time um honestly though guys it's it's just been uh, tough with you know dad life and uh working so much but i'm going to try my best to try to up uh upload uh, on a consistent basis thanks again for watching guys i'll catch you in the next one peace